Today, we will be talking about various subjects, like my favorite, Americans Drunk on Credit. We'll be talking about what's going on with the basic money management course and a few other things that are going on in society. As you can see, I've changed up some stuff, and we'll even talk about that. One of the things that is very pressing today is the number of people who are drunk on credit. It is cracking me up how many people are drunk on credit. A friend of mine on Facebook posted this thing that was really happening where you had an option of getting $600,000 cash or having an 850 credit score. I would have took the cash. I would have personally crashed my credit to get that cash. Well, you know what? Let's, let's talk about that right now. Let's, let's go ahead and do this exercise. Let's say your name is Joe and you are broke Dick Danny. You make twenty six to fifty thousand dollars a year. Your credit score is a six eighty. Someone comes, hey Joe, yo, what's up? I got six hundred thousand dollars for you. No strings attached. Here's yours. Or you could take what's behind door number two and get that high credit score. What are you gonna take? To me, it's a no brainer. Cash money is king. And he showed me the results and people were fine. Oh, I'll take that 850. Now, remember, Joe, you make between twenty six and fifty thousand dollars a year. Even with an 850 credit score. You could not borrow six hundred thousand dollars. Let me say this. You, you, you could not borrow six hundred thousand at 50 K. Maxing out every little trick, you know, the most you would be able to borrow would be 250, maybe 300. And that would be with a house as part of that. A house, some you live in that you could make money. And yeah, we'll talk about real estate, too. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that's going on on these Internet streets. One of the issues that happens with people. You're programmed. I used to be programmed. But many of you are still programmed. And this is why that 850 credit score is such a big deal. Why it's such a huge, huge thing that many people don't operate in cash. So you understand that people are not operating in cash. When you understand that people don't know the power of cash money. It becomes very clear because America's drunk on credit. We have it is what broke me was being a storage auction dude. I had to pay cash money for units. There were certain places they did not take credit cards. Public storage took credit cards. Extra space would take them if they knew you. But and some of these places had some of the best stuff and this is where i developed the habit of spending cash and where i developed the habit of making better purchases because once you spend that cash you can't raise your cash limit line once that cash is gone it's gone baby and i became a cash and carry dude i start paying cash well actually before the storage auction i start paying cash for cars and i'm gonna Tell you something. Let's just put a pin in this right now. If you make less than sixty-five thousand dollars a year, more than likely you cannot afford the car that you that is in your driveway. You can have this car and you can make payments, but when the cost of that car in present day money is compared to the loss of money in the future, you can't afford that car. You really can't. So I became this cash and carry dude, start paying cash for everything, credit cards. I, I had business credit. I had a hundred thousand dollar credit card with my business credit. I, that was just such a vanity thing for me. And I really started to 
really understand the power of cash money. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm not talk down to you. I'm not going to say, hey, you should do this because, you know, there are many people who are coming down on these government workers who you should have X. We've discussed this. We've discussed the numbers. The average person who is not a government worker doesn't have five hundred thousand five hundred dollars for uh, emergency. They don't have a thousand. They don't have two thousand, let alone five K. They don't have it. Just don't. And one of the reason is the programming of living and extending your lifestyle on credit. The banks preach it. They advertise. They target you. You've got title pawn companies trying to outdo each other. Wait, we're going to buy you out of your current title pawn and charge you less money and pay that one off to get you trapped. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, why are so many people on this credit card tip? Why are so many people who don't understand the power of cash? Generationally, if you go back to the 1960s to 1900s, everyone understood the power of cash. There, Many people did not have 30-year mortgages. They had 15, which was obscene. And typically, many people had 10-year mortgages, 10 years. So we have moved from this. And if you kind of get back into the conspiracy thing, when uh, JFK was trying to put the country on the gold standard, and then he ended up being assassinated. At that point is when we moved from cash and carry to credit cards and loans and financing a extended lifestyle because everybody wants some nice stuff, man. Everybody wants that nice car, that new car smell. That new car smell, it must be programmed. That like Once you get in someone's car, you're like, oh, God, I got to get me a new car. It's it's programming. It's programming. So one of the reasons that you're not used to dealing with cash is your mama and probably your grandparents, you know, yeah, because this really started with a lot of grandparents. You weren't just schooled in being a cash and carry type person. You weren't schooled in the principles of finance. You weren't schooled in the principles of saving. If you go around the world, many people in many countries have a higher savings rate. Many people outside of Western countries don't even use credit cards, don't even have credit cards. It's us, the UK, Australia, Japan, a lot of these places, you gotta, you gotta come with that cash. So how does one in the, the cash, the, the credit, addict habit to, to being drunk on credit. How do you stop your credit card alcoholism? First of all, I believe that for many of you, it's going to take some adverse action. You're going to have to cut up your credit cards. Just get rid of them. Cut them up. Don't close them. Do not close your accounts, but cut them up and start paying those guys off because to do a series of videos like how to handle your American Express credit cards, how to handle your Chase credit cards during the recession, because we're here, baby. We're in a recession right now. I Many people are like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Apple missed their forecast. All of these stores are closing. Unemployment is trickeration because they're including part time people in the numbers. If you were to look at the underemployed, about maybe three, four years ago, I got an Amazon package and the dude was Amazon Flex when they used to drive their cars. And he was driving a Mercedes Benz SUV that was brand new. And he was doing Amazon Flex, putting all these miles on his brand new car. Part of it is he had to. He had to do it. It's just at that point, I knew that things were amiss because many people, because we're drunk on credit, are put in situations where they're programmed to fail. They're giving out way too much credit, and this is keeping people in a 
sad state of affairs. So cut up your credit cards, pay them off, and then you need to make more money. One of the things I have a problem with in the personal finance industry is most of that information is geared for people who are poor. Now, what do I mean by poor people? Am I talking about folks in poverty? No, they don't even have any money to invest. I am talking about a chunk of America that makes between thirty-five and ninety thousand dollars a year. This is where a lot of this information is aimed, and it's designed to make the financial institutions richer and make you poor because the deal is for you to get rich slowly. Spend 30, 40 years putting money in the markets, putting money in the index funds and living like a pauper. Now, what if I told you it was a way to get out of that and get to the point because, you know, we'll go through the three stages of what you need to do to become wealthy. The first one is you need to become financially independent. Financially independent does not mean that you're a millionaire. Doesn't mean you're even rich. Financial independence is you can make more than enough money to take care of yourself without a job. This is something I've talked about, but I haven't been really clear with hustles. I've said before, first mandate, everyone needs a side hustle that makes a thousand bucks. This is the pathway because a lot of my storage auction dudes from the back in the day, they got laid off. They quit their jobs and went and did storage auctions full time after two or three years of doing it part time. There wasn't that much pressure when you're doing it part time and you had your full time income to support you while you built up the skills to be, you know, a hustler. This is something that's very important. So the first stage is become financially independent. How does one do this? You got to get out of debt, baby. You got to get out of that debt. The debt and the interest rates are going to rob your economic power today tomorrow and in the future how many of you know that all loans are in front loan front loaded interest loans it means all interest is at the beginning of the loan so if you got a car and you're not throwing extra money on that car note in the first two or three years i don't care if you start throwing extra money on it on the tail end you'll be paying it off faster but you'll be paying principal if you were Let's say you bought a $30,000 car, which I don't suggest, but let's say you did. You would be better off taking 10 to 15 grand and putting that on the principal the first year to eradicate that interest later down the road versus saving it up and just paying off your car. You'll pay off your car, your credit rating would be good, but you can pay a lot more money than you should. Part of this financial industry that's designed to keep you poor never talks about creating financial independence like the fire move once again I, I have a problem with them because they're talking about retirement it ain't really retirement that is financial independence which could end or it can be disrupted due to what the markets do so that's the first stage the second stage is to make 10 to 20 times more than the average person it means you're going to need a business there has not been a lot of talk about starting a business. And to me, as I said the other day, starting a business with knowledge in the industry that you're already well versed in is about as risky as getting another job. Now, once again, if you go off and start a business doing something you know absolutely nothing about, failure is almost guaranteed. You got to learn that business. You got to run that business. You got to make money and you got to support yourself. That's four things. That's four things you got to do from this new business that you don't know anything about. Then the third stage, once you hit the second stage, is getting wealthy and take this multiple income and buy assets that produce income. And that's how you become wealthy. Once again, you could become wealthy and not be a millionaire. I want you to put that in your cerebral cortex. You can become wealthy and not be a millionaire. Let's say you have you out in Macon, Georgia, and you got 
10 houses and they're $50,000 houses. They're paid for. So you got a net worth of $500,000 and these houses pay, let's say what? 500 bucks a month. So that's $5,000 a month minus the 10% carrying costs and maintenance. So that's $45,000 a year passive income and you ain't a millionaire, but you're wealthy because those houses are going to generate income perpetually until they burn down some happens to them. As long as they're up, as long as they maintain, they will generate money for damn near ever. You're wealthy. You ain't a millionaire. And a lot of people don't really understand this because your goal should not be to become a millionaire. Your goal should be to become financially free through a combination of proper money management habits and making more money. I don't think the making more money part is stressed as hard as it should be because with the leverage of the internets, anybody who is of average intelligence within two years should be to do consistently $1,000 to $2,000 per month online gross revenue. They ain't a lot of money, but it will change your financial destiny because you hit that $2,000 limit. Um, it's $24,000 a year. Let's say you only get to keep 16 of that between cost of goods, services, taxes, whatever. You still got your job. You do that for one year and, oh, you need a car. Bam, $16,000 for this car. No car payment. Do you know that cars stop really depreciating a lot after the first three years? They still depreciate, but not as much. So conceivably, you could buy a car for 16 k and drop it for two or three years and maybe sell it for 11 to 12. Can't do that with a new car. Knowledge, message. So another thing we need to address, uh, the new course, the basic money management thing that's 75 bucks right now i'm probably going to raise the price because we're about to get into some good stuff it's a one-time payment in the way that it's going to work and i'm going to explain to you what i'm doing once i get that done i'm going to duplicate it and this is going to become part of the second tier which is investing yourself which shall have more information, more training, deeper knowledge. And if you buy basic in financial income now and the 75 bucks, when we get to that point and you want to be part of that training program, my assistant's going to send you a link to a coupon. that's going to be 75 bucks off or whatever you pay for that course. So you will not pay for the information again, because that information will be part of the next course because one of the things I've learned from creating courses is people come and find information at various times in the future. And it's just going to be simpler to say, Hey, this is in tier one. This is in tier two. This is in tier three. And we'll just keep the process of, Hey, if you buy tier one, you'll automatically get a discount or coupon for the next tier. So you're not paying for the same information. Now, why am I doing it like this? What, what 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 are we about here? Getting more money. Uh, I'm probably later in the year I'm gonna launch a a course on how to do what I do. But typically, an influencer or someone that creates a course, what they'll do is they'll go ahead and create the course first. They will not have any feedback or input from the audience, and they'll create this course, and it'll either hit or fail. The way I do it, they don't fail because I take in feedback, I look at stats and stuff. So also it's called about cash flow. When you start your side hustle, when you start your side business, or you need cash flow. You need consistent cash flow. If you go days or weeks without a sale, you in trouble. But you don't know you're in trouble. You want velocity. You want accelerated income. And that's what happens when I sell this way. 
one, I have a long term uh, tutorial payments that are coming in. Then I have this new stuff. These are one time payments. And then I have some other stuff. So essentially, there's like four or five streams of income. Which allow me to build courses, keep people served, because what's this channel about? Make more money. I am never going to tell you to do something that I don't do or I haven't done like many people will. That seems to be the norm on the Internet. So one time payment and once this course is done, then I will add the second tier. All right. So let's get into the financial crisis. Once again, we are in a recession. We're not in a full fledged recession yet, but we're getting there. You're going to have to manage your credit very carefully during these recessionary times because the banks have algorithms and profiles and they know what you're going to do before you do it. Like all these poor uh, government workers who are furloughed or having to work without getting paid. They're exhibiting what the banks would consider to be desperate behavior, maxing out their credit cards. That's a big red flag. Um, taking cash advances. You know, I have never taken a cash advance on any of my credit cards. That is like you can do it once or twice. It's an emergency. You need to do it. Cool. But if you make that a routine thing, they're going to flag you. Why does this person need all this cash? This is a credit card driven society. There must be something up and they're going to shut you down. So one of the things also Let's go back a little bit. Uh, why am I on the basic financial education course? One of the things I've learned, I'll tell you about a client I have. And this is how people find me. You notice I don't really advertise about I got these clients and there's like no place where you can buy these services. There is, but I've took it down. People typically find me and it's like, hey, how much would you charge me to do X, Y, and Z? I sell them a price. They agree. We start working together. That's how I get into these consulting deals. And I'm going to tell you what. Uh, when I consult, I really put out a lot and time's valuable. So I charge a lot because there are many people who want to reach out, talk, chat it up. I don't get paid to talk to people. I get paid to provide solutions which means if you're in a phase where you want to talk, mull some stuff over, throw some stuff against the wall, you know, kind of have a mind melding session because you really don't know what you want to do. I'm not going to talk to you. That's what these videos are for. Just get on the channel and start watching videos. My time to talk to people or for like, I'll tell you about one client. <laughs> let's just say this person won the lottery and this person got millions upon millions upon millions was watching the YouTube channel been, been watching for a while and they, they won the lottery and then I the strange email I won the lottery what should I do it's like I think it's like okay someone's playing games because I ignored it then they, they emailed me again so we I send them a, a price because they explained some stuff that they wanted. And some are price, and then we go on the phone, and they want something totally different, so I send them another price. But essentially, I am the no man. I am their business advisor. Because essentially, big. his mama quit her job when he won the lottery. She did not tell him. She did not ask. She's like, my baby won the lottery. I'm quitting. And she came to him with a list of desires. I want a house in this neighborhood. I want this Jag and I need about $5,000 a month. Mom came at him like that. Sister came at him like that. His best boy. I want to start a chicken joint. I think I'm going to need $150,000. And I was like, have you promised any? He said, man, I haven't even got the money yet. Good. So what we did is we had a party. And, you know, I, I don't believe that if you spend that kind of money that you should be super selfish. So we had a party, gave people, set them up sums and said, look, this is what I'm giving to you. It's not a loan. It's a, it's a love offering for me to you, but you can't come back and ask for any more money. 
So there were some people who was a little salty, but you know, 20, 30 K kind of hard to be super salty. And we did that because you can't go out and get old new friends. And I was like, look, here's your situation. Be generous, but don't hurt yourself. And we came up with a number and we dished out the money. Now mom is salty. Mom, like, she's like, I quit my job. And I had to talk to mom. I was like, no one told you to quit your job. No one told you. You just did this stuff without asking. What if your son was spending your money without your permission? So had to work some out with her. She was just, good Lord. So let's just say she now has another job. She works part time and we work some stuff out because even though he won a great sum of money, essentially, when I added up all of the ask, it came up to four million dollars between mom, his friend, brought the buck, four million dollars, just boom, just like that. And I'll say, dude, once you this money, they're gonna come back for some more. He was like, oh my God. He was freaking out. He was stressing kid. I can't sleep. <laughs> so now we got it cool. But one of the things you have to understand about money when you start to get money people who are not getting money who know you who love you who've been in your corner feel that y'all came up not that you came up but y'all came up that will be the unwritten expectation and we i had some people i had to talk to and it's like look he hired me as the business manager uh the dude who wanted to start the chicken joint i said what's your business plan just uh email me your business plan let's go right now just he said i don't have one so whoa 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 whoa, whoa. you want one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for what he's like well you know i gotta get the building okay he's like you're gonna pay cash for the building he's like no it's gonna be rent this dude did not have a solid business plan this would have been just poof it would have been like taking a barrel, throwing cash in there, lighter. That's what would happen with that. And I explained it to him. And I said, look, this is what you need to do. And uh, worked it out. Why don't you start with a food truck? Gave him enough money. I mean, you could start a food truck for 20 Gs. Gave him 30. He started a food truck. Now, he he has gotten in the habit of calling me because now his, his truck is actually making a profit. He's paid off the twenty thousand dollars that he, he he's he's got that back in less than a year. He's got all that back. He's like, maybe I need. I was like, no, no, you don't need another truck. You need to lock this truck down until you got people lined up around the street corner. You don't need another truck. You need to pimp this truck out. So the food truck has a morning route. Food truck has a nighttime route. Uh, he's got some people. They go park outside the club. People come out the club. They smoking weed got the munchies that truck is making money most of the day doubled his revenue just by a little move so once again once you get money people without money will flock to you they'd be like <laughs> and if you don't open up that wallet a little bit they're gonna start being haters. so that that's one of the things and i'm doing the Financial education because guys a millionaire. I have a few millionaires, legitimate millionaires. They make three to ten million dollars a year. I'm not doing the thing I did last time. It's very more, very much more structured, and it doesn't take a lot of time per week. But everyone needs a basic financial education because there are some people who are extremely hardworking, very talented, and they 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 build something and they start making money and they don't know what to do with it. So they start. I got one guy we're, we're working on bringing his lifestyle spin down. Good dude. His lifestyle spin is $80,000 a month. His business makes 200 grand a month. That's not going to last a long time. And uh, he suffered some reversals in his business and he started seeing what I was talking about. But Part of this, and this is very unstructured stream. I, I think I got real tight in the beginning about America's drunk on credit. You're going to have to get off that diet. You, you're going to have to. 
uh, just be looking out for these videos about how to manage your American Express and your Chase accounts because you ever notice that it's the same credit card companies that have the best deals, American Express, Chase, Citibank, Bank of America. If you mess up with them, you don't have that money, you will be locked out forever. And when you're going through it and you don't have the money, like, I don't care. But when you get clean again, and you want to get that American Express, but you owe them money. They're going to say no. And you want to pay them in full, not work a deal, but pay them in full to get back in their graces. So the thing is to never get into uh, that situation. Oh, yeah, I want to bring this up, too. Um, Most of you are really good about watching the videos for your comment, and I really appreciate that. But for my new folks, do not half watch a video and leave a comment. I had this person thought he was talking to himself because I know better. He said, my attorney said it was too risky to start my trucking company under a holding company. He didn't even watch the video. Many of you already know the process. Holding company. Didn't Why? Because holding company doesn't do business with anyone. Which also let me know he didn't talk to a company, an attorney, or more like he didn't talk to an attorney because any attorney would have told him that. Any CPA would have told him that. I was just like, man. So please, if you're new, welcome. Welcome to the family. But please watch the full video before you commit. I didn't either him. I just like, we're going to wish him a good day. We're going to say he needs Jesus. But um, yeah, this, this is some crazy stuff. But that's why I'm doing the basic financial education. It is not done. I'm not working on anything else until it's done. Uh, my assistant is emailing people. We got some housekeeping to do. Uh, next week, we'll be emailing the people who are part of Disruptive Mail. We got some good stuff coming for y'all. But essentially, just from what I go through, having millionaires, having people who are making like 200, 300, I got one guy, he makes a million dollars a month. But his overhead is stupid. His overhead is stupid. It makes in the month, but profit is like 50K. And for his industry, that's exceptional. Kind of like that Amazon thing. Like anybody doing that Amazon delivery service, which is just a straight up gank. Because I look, I, I read the numbers. I was like, you got to manage 40 people, 40 trucks, and you only gonna make 300 k to a person who never made 300 k that seems reasonable that you know that just it wouldn't work for me uh someone who's really poor had to work a lot of crappy jobs that could be very viable but to those of us who know that's a straight up gank you got all the money all the risk on you and at any point amazon can get rid of you i was like don't do that because i had someone who paid for discuss that and i pointed out all of the gotchas and he was like oh my god there's a reason that it's only ten thousand dollars where it's really 40. You need to get them 10,000. You need to have 30 K in the bank. So you need 40. That's another little misnomer. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of gotchas here, but it's 2019 people. And, um, every month it gets a little worse. So, and also this recession, it is not going to like, Hey man, I'm here. It's just going to be like, boom. It's like it's going to drop out the sky. So let me see what's going on with these questions. Huh, they're in that money. What's up, Raquel? Johnny Bay, thanks for the five bucks. Christy Loomis Cash. What's up, Pittsburgh gentlemen? Excalibur. Awesome, Johnny. Uh, Blazing Crypto. Uh, blazing crypto profits my hey glennon i'm love bro I once heard you say you don't like gary v and i was just wondering what do you mean by that i don't like the premise that gary v says he came from thing it is false it's a false narrative gary v grew up the son of a millionaire I, I want you to think about that also historically children of entrepreneurs who are successful tend to be successful entrepreneurs like trump when you have um, 
Gary V's father or Fred Trump, you have the blessing of all blessings. You got someone who can make mad money and also instill the game into you. I mean, breathe it. And like every day you're having dinner with your millionaire father. There are people out here who are trying to get 30 minutes of some millionaire's time just to chat. You see him in the morning. You see him at the dinner table. You see him on the weekends. You work in the store. You with him eight hours. For him to say that that had nothing to do with his success is just utter BS to me. He, is he successful? Yes. Is he revo revolutionary? Yes. Has he done things? Yes. But the foundation was laid by his father. And without his father, I don't believe we would know who Gary Vee is. What's up, General? The official Sean Jones What's going on. Thank you. Rose Howard can make more money with the money. Absolutely. What's up, Lamote? The blinding Buddha. What's going on? <laughs> Man, people are drunk on credit. I've just seen some stuff that's crazy. Thanks for the dollar blazing crypto. What's up, Douglas Jones, Christy, the loose dreamer? Thank you for the ten dollars. What's going on, General? If you start with this, will it lead to the holding LLCs? Will that be part be added later, or should I grab the package? I'm already in hustle kung fu. Thank you. Uh, no. Look, let's just go through what's going to be. There's the basic finance education course, which I'm working on. The next course will be investing yourself. It's going to be a personal development. It's going to be some stuff that I, I've, I've done, but I don't really think I've talked about. Because investing in yourself is a combination of reading books, doing, and investing in health. There, there's a lot to it. So I'll do that. And the LLC stuff, which is a great point, thanks for bringing that up. A lot of people are just not ready for that until they start earning some money. I had a friend, well, I have a friend, who started making money online. And when he had those first few sales, he was like, oh, my God, this is real. But until he actually did it and felt it, it wasn't real. And I, that's what a lot of people are um in that state with the LLC stuff, because the LLC stuff, just a shell. It's a protective cover for the money you make, but without money, it's kind of worthless. When I say kind of, because there's a way to create LLCs, to create shell corpse, to do certain things without really making money that can benefit your children. But what I want to do is invest on the core principle, make more money, learn how to sell. That's what I want to do. And it's going to LLC is going to come back in the third tier. Or if you want it, you can go ahead and buy the package because what's coming is going to be what I thought was. Well, let, let, let me just let you know what's going on in my head. One of the problems with creating courses is if you put too much in there, people just tune out. And I was like, you know what? Am I going to appeal to people's basic wants, which is easy, fast, and quick? Or I'm going to give people what they need. So the course is going to be fatter and it's going to have more information because I'm of the, I'm going to give you what you need, not what you want, but what you need to be successful. And then that will come into the third tier, which will be a monthly membership deal because monthly I'm going to be putting out new and fresh information. Kind of like you go to Burger King. Every time you go to Burger King, you got to pay them because you're eating a new time. So that's what it's going to be. But tier one will be a one-time fee. Tier two will be a one-time fee. Tier three will be the monthly membership. And then everyone that was part of Hustler Undergrad, they will get into tier three. The official Sean Jones. Jones, the problem is people do not know how to make excess cash. True. This is why we're doing the basic. Because first of all, Let's say you're a hustler. There's natural born hustlers who can get money, get money. They get in the jam. They can hustle up money, but they don't know what to do with that money. They don't know how to take a part of that money and put it in this vehicle or put it over here. So when they 
starts raining, they could put up their money umbrella. And that's a lot of people. There's a lot of people who are really good at making money, but they can't hang on to it. They can't keep it. They can't grow it. So that, tr that is true. That's why econ business is awesome because it shows you how to make excess cash than what you're accustomed to. And that's a really valid point because you know how you try to lose weight and your body has a set point. Let's say you're 200 pounds and you want to lose, let's say 30. It's going to be hard because your body is accustomed to that 200 pounds. So you will lose it, but your body's going to do something to try to get back to it because that's what it's used to. Everyone has a financial set point. Everyone has a money set point. You ever notice how if you make some extra money, you will find some way to get rid of it because your financial set point isn't high enough where this cash comes in. You can sit on it. This is why I talk about holding money and making it a habit. If you have a habit of when you get some money to sector it out here, 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 as that habit grows, your money will grow. So that's a very good point. What's up, James says? Salute. Uh, how do you get? Well, I just answered that. So hopefully you heard that. Cash is king for the next two months. Cash is king for the next two years, man. Four, four trucker. That's funny. Johnny Bay. Yep. Got my processor. Americans use them cars. Immigrants use cash. Always discount for cash at the two cent at the two percent for the cash credit processing. Uh, Matthew Green, uh, the choice programs are below this video. And to get into the new program, that's in the, there's two comments. There's a long comment and a short comment. To get into the new course, it's a short comment. I've never heard of Corey Smith, James. Gunja, I paid my car off in 2.5 years, but barely had any money saved. That's kind of the trap, man. This is what I mean by America's drunk on credit. You get some, you pay it off. But you ever notice how when you get to a certain point, it's like, you know, it's time to get a new car. When the warranty runs out, so you start this thing up. Every time you buy a new car, you finance it for five to eight years. Yes, there's eight-year car loans out there now. You set your retirement date back five to ten years each time you do that. That's how much money you're losing buying new cars. What's up to one? Uh, it's about action this year. I participated in my first three storage auctions. I ended up with two units that contained everything to grow weed. <laughs> I bought one of those units. Man, that that's crazy. What's up, Javon? Uh, J Love. Hey, Glennon, do you sell your credit building course separately? I am going to address that in the new thing a little bit more because some stuff has changed, and I don't want to give you information that isn't what you need because there, there's the new credit reporting is wicked. So we'll look for that to come. J Love, all the banks in my area are advertising cash advances like crazy. Uh, you get. Some credit cards, credit union cards, they may not, care, but I guarantee you, if you get in the cash advance every month and that bank has issues with their reserves, expect your credit limit to be crammed down or then to shut you off. Also, cash advances, you pay a lot of interest, like 20, 25%. So you bought cash advance like a thousand bucks and take a year to pay it off, you pay 250 bucks. For that thousand dollars, twenty five percent. That's insane. All right, Dwayne. Cool. KPD two. I watch your new videos and old videos daily. Life changing so far. 
I even got my fiance into building credit and building wealth the right way. Congratulations. I appreciate that. Ganji, watch videos, take action. Speaking of action, I got three prospects interested in my photography services. To everyone, go to networking events if you want to get more prospects. Uh, typically, all my friends who sell high end Facebook packages, like they actually do the ads for you, YouTube, they speak at events, and this is how they get their customers. So that's a very valid point. J Lo, he won a lot. <laughs> he won a lot. Lynn, you sure we can't get new? You can get new friends, but you can't get new old friends. People, you know, that he's known from childhood were coming at him. I mean, it, it will sound like a first world problem, but it can be panic inducing when you have everybody after you for your money. I mean, he was he was freaking out. And also, once again, you know, we worked out a plan. Most people were happy with the gift. They were like, cool, man. I didn't even expect this. So he gifted these folks. And it's just you can't get no more money in the future. This is where people get into trouble. Dominic Wilkins, uh, he was a basketball player here in Atlanta many years ago. This dude has seven card notes per month, making three million. I'm like, why? And now this is when. An expensive, a super expensive car was filled for fifty thousand. That was crazy to pay fifty thousand dollars for a car. He's making three million. It made no sense. Awesome, Ganja. Uh, Lynn, not how much you make, but what you do with it. To a point that is true, to a point that's not true. If you're in the bottom, tw you know, 20 some, 30 some thousand dollars a year, you could do a good job of managing that money. You can grow that money, but we're talking 30, 40 years. If you start a business or even just a side hustle, let's just say you have your 20, 30 thousand dollar year job, you start a side business and you get your side business to the point. That's making 30,000 and you keep your job because of the insurance I can tell you from personal experience. Once you go 100 percent full time, your insurance gets crazy. Um, you can change your life that way. I mean, if you're making 100 K, yes, absolutely. You're making 20. That's hard. That's just. I, I don't really see that because you're making. Even at 26, they're going to take 6,000 in taxes. I'm like, yeah. Four to five or something like that. You ain't even making $2,000 a month after taxes. All right, Dwayne, Brian, coach, you're becoming the man on YouTube. I heard you man come up on the Obsidian show. <laughs> yeah, I heard something about that. I think it was in regards to that. MGTOS a hate group. Yes, I talk to Kevin all the time. Well, I've talked to him a few times. All right. Good Lord. It really jumped. Jenny Blake, I can haul for food and I can't afford your course and I'm afraid. But I'm going to start a dropshipping company when I get enough money. The first thing I'm going to do is start your course. Uh, Jenny Blake, do this. Street money. Start scouring Craigslist. I don't care if you're in Timbuktu. Ask your friends for shit they don't want and start there. Um, drop shipping to start a legitimate drop shipping business to make some money. Because if you notice, a lot of the folks who are pushing drop shipping are no longer making those videos because of the trump tariffs um now start making money with what you can do right now because street money is free uh essentially it sounds like if you made an extra two to three hundred bucks a month that would be game changing for you oh, the blinding boodle what's up matthew green go below 
the it's one of the two links below. Yes, that, that's one of my part. He was born into it. And I think that I'm going to get a little racial here. Certain white people who come from privileged means act like they had nothing to do with their success. I remember my ex-wife worked with this couple who actually knew, who were real honest about it. They were humble. Essentially, their family worked like this. You graduate college, you get a brand new car, and then you get to live in this house. You have no car note, you have no house note, and you get to live in the house until the next person in the family is up for that. So they lived in the house for two and a half years, and what they did is the money that they would have spent for car payments and then what they would have spent for rent, they banked it. And serious head start. And people who get these head starts act like, well, it was just me. I was just working hard. Everyone, no, everyone wasn't born with parents or born into a family system that was just so wonderful. I mean, awesome. If you could do that for your kids, do it for your kids. But also make sure I'm like, you know, you didn't do this on your own. Like Trump and Gary Vee, they keep acting like, oh, I did all. No, they didn't. No, you didn't. A-Y-I, I mean, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, High Long has not one but two sons in the NFL. You cannot tell me having your dad be a Super Bowl Hall of Famer in the NFL did not help you growing up as a kid. <laughs> you, you, you just, and people keep acting like, yeah, I did this on my, no, you did Thank you, Dwayne. Kirby Frank, it's much more difficult when you come from a low-income neighborhood. Change your mindset from poverty to abundance. Seriously, so much unlearning and reprogramming. Kirby Frank. And that's one of the things that I realized because I, I, I was talking about your money clock. I just was talking off my head because you things that I've experienced, right? I did some research on that and someone put in the comment that the average person is going to earn the most money they're ever going to earn in their life at age 37. I went and looked it up on the Google machine and it's true. People typically peak out at 37 to 40 and then it starts to decline. So, let me tell you what happened to me. I used to work in the lab. And after, you know, my sad, sad story of being homeless and living in this house, my first job, we were in the crate, it paid 45K. Then I got into selling office furniture in my first year, I made close to 200. And then I started my own thing and I made a million. Once again, this is not a profit. I actually made like maybe 35K profit which I had to pay taxes on, which ain't a lot of money. Fortunately, I had some serious savings. And then I got in the storage auction business. Little did I know what I was doing was exceptional. I mean, I'm 52. And proportionally, and I'll explain this, because last year I had the, the offices and the staff. So gross did not make as much money last year as i did that year which was 2017. however from a net income standpoint i made more money thus year after year i have made more money and if you go if you listen to brian tracy's early stuff he actually talks about this that and this is personal development if you get into a proper personal development training program you can double and triple your income year after year after year what I didn't understand was since I studied all these businesses, I took what businesses do because if a business isn't making more money year after year, it's trouble. And that's how I looked at my life. It's like, if I'm not making more money, if I'm not doing you know more money this quarter than I did last quarter, uh, I'm falling. But that's how I looked. I did not know that most people top out at 37 and 40. I did not know that. I knew there was peak earning years and actually I did 
I, I Googled it. Most men top out, and this is the majority of men, 50 something. And after that, it starts going down. Blue my mind. I know the answer is to see. Lamo, yep, those points, man. That's free money. King Isaac, I'll check that out. Five G's a month. I mean, seriously, there, there are many ways to pen. And this is one of the things like my lifestyle is my income is generated from my lifestyle. I wanted this lifestyle. I mean, it used to be really interesting. I wrote down on a piece of paper that only one work Tuesday through Wednesday. Now, Tuesday through Wednesday, well, Tuesday through Thursday. And I got to a point for about almost three years where doing one or two videos a week, few sessions. I was literally working maybe 25 hours a month, maybe. And that was my retirement phase. I didn't really understand what I had done. Uh, let's see. Mr. Rhino Silver, would you buy rental property at this moment? Let's talk about that. That's in my future. Now, first of all, one of the reasons that I've been a little close to the vest is my plan is to, um, I'll, I'll just explain it. I'm waiting for everything to melt down or melt down pretty much. Uh, I don't think we're going to be in a situation where houses are going to lose 30 and 40% of their value. I don't think that's going to happen. But I do believe that houses, if they appreciate, it will be very marginal. And I've been keeping track, like all the houses in this neighborhood that are for sale, that have not been remodeled, sit. And then that, the, there's a, literally a house around the corner and whoever used to own it did a wonderful job of remodeling it. Like they went down to the stud, I think. Uh, the originals, it's like to call the first homeowner of the house. It was the originals. They had bought the house in like 1992. I think for 300. Sold it for 850. But they completely remodeled this house. I mean, it looked like a, a show home on the inside. So that's why the sucker sold. So to answer your question, it is my intent to buy rental property starting August, between August and October of this year to get my first piece of rental property. But see, this is the thing. And one of the reasons that I'm not like shouting about is I'm not going to be buying real estate like, 95 percent of the people out here i'll be what's called a hard money ca hard cash money whatever I'm, I'm planning to pay cash for the house put a renter in there and just sit on it see i make a good deal of money doing what i do that's not what the in rental property is for the rental property is to preserve wealth so take some money from the wealth stream move it over here park it over here into an asset that pays cash every month then get another one and get another one. Um, probably 15 to 20. That's my plan. And then I'll look into multifamily. Now, women, why don't you go into multifamily immediately? I like the ideal of owning 15 to 20 properties cash free. I've already done the math. If I had six, that's retirement. If, you know, for my income level, six of the kind of properties I want, I'm not going to 50. Or a hundred thousand dollar properties. I'm gonna buy two fifty to three hundred thousand and just sit on them and pay cash for them. If I need to pull cash out, I can do the equity loan, do all kinds of stuff. Um, one of the reasons that you see so many wholesale and flipping and all this stuff during this recession, you're gonna see a lot of that stuff disappear. At some point in the food chain, someone's gotta pay the bills. Everybody just can't keep making money off everyone else. At some point, 
there will not be enough money for everybody to make money without putting some money in. So that that's the long term plan. And Florida, there's a lot of foreclosed properties. You will see foreclosures are going up. You can check the stats yourself. Uh, George Montgomery, greetings, King. Is it why to fix the hoopty? Absolutely. Uh, Dwayne Bryant, Coach G, is the course on billion sales experience on the website? No, it's not, but it will be coming. King Isaac, what do you think about using the local chamber of to find clients? I think it's very valuable if you know how to network. That's the key. Like just joining, you got to be, go to their events. You got to learn how to talk to people. You, it is a skill set on how to network. So that's what makes that thing really work. <laughs> Amazon's a trip. What's up, point to point transportation? Dwayne Bryant, Coach G, the guy who hit up the lottery is better than me about giving out money because I would have gave him some Wendy's gift certificates. <laughs> He's a good dude, man. Johnny Bay, I, I bought my kids tech over the years for my side hustle. Now one in college, I'm not sweating anything. Thanks for your help. Appreciate it. Oh, man. Yeah, an IT person can be a salesperson. We're all salesperson to a degree. Crep TV junkie, what's up, man? Crep, I believe, is in London. He's he 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 really tried to hook me up with some years ago. Um, essentially, like when I got this house, I didn't get this house because I wanted a big house. I got this house because I needed space. I went shopping for this house with a checklist, and this. It's really interesting. Like if you go looking for a car for a checklist, like I love power. That's why I have two V8s. It's a different buying experience versus buying because it's a Mercedes or it's this. It's very different. I mean, honestly, I don't like the way that most Mercedes ride. It's just too soft to ride for me. And that's just a personal preference. It's not that Mercedes is a bad car. It's just I don't like that ride. I mean, I really don't. I like a tight, firm ride. Uh, low sung, but that's just personal taste. What's up, Benjamin? <laughs> What's up, Joe? Uh, Kirby Frank, would you buy the house and remodel or leave it? At well, my, my plan is to buy a house that's rent ready. Uh, maybe I can get some more money, maybe get more bang from a book by buying an older house because essentially... A lot of these older houses around here, they have oak cabinets and just yuck stuff. And it probably take 15 to 20 K to juice it up a little bit. So it just really depends. I have no intention of ever living in these houses. You know, if I'm like sell my house and I need a place to live and one's empty. Okay. But I have no intention of ever living them. Awesome. Cosmic Wilson. Law PHA PH, you're right about the economy. I work in business finance and there's a lot of defaults on loans and working capital deals. The economy is slowing down. I don't care what the Fed says, I don't care what. Oh, I'm gonna do a different video. It's called the two economies. Look out for that. Uh, that's actually in my on my list of things to do because do you know that? The general economy can impact the stock market, but really doesn't have anything to do with the stock market. But yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Dwayne, I have members that are up in the next index, and every time they're late on their bills, paying the accumulated late fee overdraft fees, they often ask me to loan to cover it. Woo! Mm. Peter John, I'm going to answer this one. I got to answer. What's the best small business to start or work in your regular job? A business that you know a lot about. If you currently work as a siding salesman 
it would be in your best interest to figure out what's wrong with deciding business and start something that's better. Junkie. Oh, I figured they would. I mean, they got sponsored by the NBA. Well, congratulations to those guys. So awesome. All right. So that's going to wrap it up. Um, just talk about live streams will not be predominant. Um, probably one week or one every two weeks or something like that. And I will be working more so on creating compelling videos. Uh, I've seen a lot of comments about the improved quality and the editing. Cool. I'm working on it because I want to make these things like little movies. So look out for that. But typically, you know, one or two a month, that'll be it. General, I have an online stream of income from eBay, a couple of 40 to 120 a month. Uh, general, figure out what's holding you back from making a thousand bucks a month. This is one of the things that I have found to be true. When you're making like a thousand bucks a month, spending money on LLC stuff, it's not really that big of a deal. But if the money has to come out of your money, as people like to call it, it is a big deal. <laughs> no, I'm not any long sharking. All right. Well, that's it. Just wanted to uh, touch base with the people. And I will see you guys soon. Go below if you want to be part of the basic financial education course. I'll be working on that this weekend. And there's some more links for some of the other stuff. Because just once again, Hustle Kung Fu Life Skills.com hasn't gone anywhere. Everything is still there. And if you want to buy in or peruse the site, have at it. So that, I'll see you guys later.